Hello guys, I hope you are doing good. Welcome to this new video. Today we are going to solve another interesting JavaScript problem. This problem is related to performance. As you are aware, network requests are very expensive. And considering the developing countries like India, where we are still um, not able to provide a stable 3G plus support pan India over all the cities. So if you want to create an application that is accessible to everyone throughout the India, irrespective of their network speed, we have to consider performance in mind. The one way to optimize that is to minimize the network request. So the problem statement that we have today is related to that only. What we have to do is we have to create a function cached API call that will take a time and it will make an API call and it will cache the result of that API call for that duration. For example, on the screen, if you see, we have the cached API call method that takes 1500 millisecond as a time, and then it returns a function to call. Now that call function will take the URL and the configuration um, to which the API call should be made, and then its result will be populated. Now, if you use the same URL path and the same configuration and if you hit the same API within the time frame that is less than 1500 millisecond then rather than making a fresh API call to the network it will return the cached data. So we have to implement this cached API call method that will be showcasing the working of the cached API call. So let's start implementing this. As you can see from the problem statement, the cached API call takes a time and it returns a function. That return function accepts the URL and the configuration and it returns a promise. On that promise, we are able to get the result from the uh, API call, the URL that we have passed. So seeing the problem statement, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create cached API call and it will accept time. So I'm going to accept the time and then it will return a function. Now that return function will return a promise as you can see over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that function async. Async function always returns a promise. So that's why I'm going to make the function async. And then this function will accept the URL and the configuration. So I'm going to accept the URL. Now this configuration is optional. Uh, so it can be omitted. That's why I'm assigning a default value to that. And we can accept the param uh, sorry, the URL and then we can make the API call to this. Now to cache something, we need to create a unique key so that we can identify that um, this is the uh, key that belongs to this particular API call. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to create a function, sorry, a variable that will cache the result for us. This variable we are going to use as closure. So we are forming a closure over here. This function is returning a function. And in the parent function, we are creating a variable that will be accessed inside the child function. Even after the child function, uh, even after the parent function has uh, uh, got out of the context after the execution. So in this, we are going to store the result of the uh, API calls and we'll check every time if the result is expired or not, the duration for which we have saved, saved the uh, result. So the first thing is the unique identifier. We need to identify this you, uh, this particular API call. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a key. I'm going to use a simple methodology over here. So I'm going to get the URL itself and from the configuration, assuming that the configuration we receive will be in object, will be an object. So I'm going to create a JSON string from that. So json.stringify, this will return me a string, json string and using the URL and this configuration, I can create a unique key that we can use to store the result. Now, let me get the entry from the cache. 
so we have to check if the entry is present or not if the entry is not present this is a new or a fresh call then we have to make a api call otherwise along with the value i am going to store the expiry time for this value so the expiry time will be the uh, will be in the near future that is if you see the time we receive is let's say 1500 milliseconds so 1500 milliseconds from now will be the expiry time for the entry or the value that we are going to get so for that so uh, what i'm going to do over here is first thing is i'll check if we have the entry or not so if there is no entry then we have to make a fresh api call or otherwise if date dot now so date dot now returns the current time in millisecond so if date dot now is greater than entry dot expiry so as i said right while storing the value i'm going to store the value and the expiry time in the near future by adding the milliseconds or the time we receive so that we can determine when this value will expire so the check i'm adding over here is first thing is if the entry is not available this is a new api call then we have to make the api call or else if the entry is expired so this cache key will hold a value and that sorry it will hold an object and that object will have value as well as the expiry time so when that value will expire now the, we have the base condition so if there is no entry or the uh, entry is expired we are going to make an api call so i am going to log it making a fresh api call and here i am going to use the try catch block because this is the async function so i am going to use async await to make the api call so and here i am just logging error while making api call so if in case we receive an error while making the api call i'm going to log that and here i'm saying let response is equal to await fetch then fetch will accept the url as well as the config and it will make the api call after that we get the response and i get the json so response.json I got the value a raw data after passing that and then we are going to store this so what we are going to do is if the entry is not created then we are going to create a fresh entry otherwise even if the entry is available and it is expired then also we are going to override and create a new entry that's why I am reassigning the value over here so value is response and expiry is date dot now so date dot now returns the current time in millisecond plus the millisecond after which it will expire in the near future which is the time so after uh, 1500 milliseconds in the near future it will expire that's why i have added this time so now we got the value and the expiry time our base condition is ready at the end i'm going to return the value so here i have added a negation check so it will initially check if the entry is not there or the entry is expired so it will create an entry in either case a new entry will be created so after this condition has been checked we will get the value always so ultimately i got the cache dot value and i am going to return that so this will be returned from this async function so here we should get the value now if i run this you will see that for the first call we should get the log making a fresh api call for the second call we should not get the log it should return the data from the cache see we got the log making a fresh api call and then the data is printed and after that for the second call uh, for the second instance there was no api call it has written the data from the cache because we had made the call between uh, before 1500 millisecond that is before the expiry time now let me add a identifier over here so one to determine that's the first call and then over here two 
and again I'm going to call the API after 1600 millisecond just to make sure that things are working fine for for the third call it should again make a fresh API call so let me clear this and run this again so see making a fresh API call we got the first log printed then we got the second log printed where we have the object written from the cache and then for the third sometimes due to um, this time mismatch in this online uh, environments coding environments we are not able to see the proper output for the set timeout for example if i run this again you will see that so before so we made the first call making a fresh api call then we got the first log second log and then before the third log it has again made the fresh api call so everything is working fine these types of question you can expect in big product based companies like atlassian uber and then google so i hope you have learned something new today thank you for your time